one of the principles of kingdom living. God gives you, if you'll operate in your righteousness, your new creation realities by faith, he gives you keys, keys to lock and unlock. And whatever you lock and unlock on earth, it shall be done in heaven. Happy Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Derby, the family of Faith Victor Church, right here in the capital city of Frankfort, Kentucky. And delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's word once again. Luke 1 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And we get this much time together. I like to see movement. Hallelujah. Even though I got a timer from my media guy, I like to see movement. Praise God. All this month, we've been looking at Kingdom Now Living. Our springboard verse has been Colossians 1.13. Let's just dive in it now. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son? What a powerful revelation that is that we are translated. That means you were here just a moment ago, now you're here now. And that's what happened to you and I when uh, we accepted Jesus as our personal savior. Certainly, we got forgiveness of sin. Certainly, we were born again and our, our dead in, in sin and trespass spirit came alive to uh, the creator God. Certainly. but. At the same time, we are translated into the kingdom. I didn't know that. All I knew was I was a 14-year drug addict drunk, just a messed up individual right in the middle of divorce with my wife. And I hated her. She hated me. And she gets saved. And three days later, I get saved. And all of a sudden, we're, 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 Newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word. And we didn't, we didn't know nothing about kingdom. We didn't know we'd been translated into kingdom. Somebody come up to me and said, son, you just got born again. Yes, sir. I knew that from, from the church I was raised in. I knew, I knew what that was. My wife was Catholic. She never heard that terminology. But she, she had experienced it and quickly embraced it. But if, they, if somebody come up to me and says, son, you've just been translated into the kingdom of Jesus. What are you talking about? I ain't been translated nowhere. I'm right here on earth. No, you've been translated into the kingdom. So because nobody explained that to me and, there, and all the folks that I was going to church with, I didn't hear nobody talking about kingdom. Uh, not living now in the kingdom but yet uh it says here that we've been translated in the kingdom of his dear son well if you and i as born again believers don't understand kingdom and don't start living by kingdom principles and laws spiritual laws that govern the kingdom we will not have the fullness of the blessing that the kingdom provides king jesus is king of the kingdom in which you and I got born again. And Jesus said in John 3, 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. And how that's been interpreted, except a man be born again, he cannot see ever heaven in his life. In other words, he won't go to heaven. 
Well, certainly that part's true, but that's not what Jesus said. Let me back up for those of you that may be viewing this for the first time. Matthew 3, verse 2 says, John the Baptist came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Again, when something is at hand, it's within reach. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4, I believe it's verse 17, preached the same thing. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus rose from the dead in the book of Acts, you'll find it in verses, uh, in chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, he, he, he uh, showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. But then he talked to the apostles about things pertaining to the kingdom. He taught his disciples to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Just like it's going on in heaven. As it is in heaven. So there is, is, is a kingdom that we are supposed to be living in. And I brought out the truth last time we were together on this. And if, and if you uh, miss those teachings, you can go uh, to our Roku channel or to our website and uh, find those teachings on Kingdom Now Living and catch up on what you may have missed because I'm, 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 I'm doing as much review as I can uh, but I want to keep going for those that have been uh, following this all the way through. So we found out last time that we were together that uh, Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, <clears throat> excuse me, and all these other things, the things that you need in life, will be added unto you. It did not say, Seek ye first God. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And when I first got born again, I read it as seek ye first God. Well, certainly, God ought to be priority number one. And, you know, he rewards those that diligently seek him. And if you'll seek, you'll find. All those truths are true. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he's telling, he's given the solution on the things that you need in life, how they'll be added unto you in a kingdom fashion, not by working hard and earning them, not against hard work. All, uh, you know, I've been working. I, I came out of the womb working. My, da my daddy and mommy, uh, bless their hearts, they're in heaven, but they, they, they taught us how to work. And I'm thankful for that. But uh, Jesus was explaining how to operate and live in the kingdom was get an understanding of the kingdom of God and his righteousness because righteousness is your identification. It's your ID card, if you will, to uh, operate in the kingdom. And we found out last time in Romans chapter 10 that righteousness is of faith. The violent take the kingdom by force, Matthew eleven twelve. The violent take the kingdom of force, the kingdom. The violent take from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Why? The enemy don't want us to understand it. And the violent take the kingdom. You've already been translated in it, but they take the kingdom principles and they apply them in their life by force. What force? Force of faith. It's through faith and patience that we inherit the promise. Promises of what? The kingdom. See? So there, there's a lot that uh, is left out in uh, a believer's understanding that causes them to live substandard. And I'm not claiming to have arrived. Just like Paul said, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
Hallelujah. And so there's a kingdom. When you and I accepted Jesus as a personal Savior, there's this kingdom that we've been translated into. Not someday you're going to go to. You're in it now. Now, whether you are reaping any benefits of that kingdom is going to be determined by you understanding kingdom uh, laws and principles and, and applying them and living in them, see? So uh, Jesus went around preaching the kingdom. If, if you look at this in Matthew chapter 9, I already mentioned Matthew 4, that Jesus would preach in the kingdom. But in Matthew 9, look at this in verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Why, why was he healing every sickness and every disease among the people? Because he's preaching kingdom and demonstrating it. Sickness and disease is not in heaven. There is none. Now, you might have had a family member that died uh, uh, from some sort of sickness, some sort of disease. And uh, I've got many... Uh, a friend and even family members that have gone that way or was it God's best? No, they didn't understand kingdom now see that right there is right up in your face they didn't understand kingdom you say well how can you say that? because I know what scripture says Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. It's one thing to teach. It's another thing to preach. You teach when you got, when you got listening ears. You preach when the ears aren't really uh, listening. And you got to break through some stuff. See? And he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus. Look at it over here in uh, Matthew 10. He tells, he tells his disciples this. Verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying. Now he tells them what to preach. <laughs> now I got a, a lot of young preachers. Uh, in my congregation. I mean, they, they're, they're preaching machines. And I basically let them get a word from heaven. I don't, I don't tell them, hey, I want you to preach on this. Now, if I told them a, a theme or something, uh, they would do it just, you know, because they understand order. But Jesus tells them what to preach. He says, and as you go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's within reach. So you got John the Baptist preaching it. You got Jesus preaching it. You got him sending out his disciples preaching the kingdom is at hand. Now, folks, we got to wake up. We got, we got, we got to. Uh, get our eyes open to kingdom, uh, kingdom now. Well, uh, speaking of that, Revelation chapter 12. It says in verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. They all came at the same time. Now has come salvation, strength, the kingdom of God, and the power 
of Christ. See? So the kingdom is not someplace afar off. Now, certainly, our uh, loved ones that have gone on before us, they're in the visible kingdom. That kingdom's visible to them. Invisible to us, unless God opens our eyes supernaturally for a, a, a moment, like he did with Elijah's servant when they were surrounded by a great nat natural army. And Elijah says, there's more that be with us than be with him. And that servant thought he was crazy. See, but th that was just angelic protection that the kingdom had to offer. Now that kingdom has actually come. And, and God opened up that servant's eyes and he saw chariots of fire, angels all around. Well, that kingdom now has come. We have ministering angels in this kingdom. See, but there are, there are certain ways of operating in the kingdom that God's not going to bend and twist because you and I don't understand it. You have to understand your new creation realities that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus by faith. And you have to understand that uh, in the kingdom in which we've been translated into, see, that there are keys. Keys. Well, look at it. Matthew 16. And verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Well, that's a profound question. Who do you say Jesus is. Oh, he's my Savior. He's my Lord. He's my King. Wonderful. Wonderful. Because he's all that. But do you understand that he's the King of a kingdom in which you've been translated into? And a king gives commands and his commands are not grievous. And the commands that he gives is all for the advancement of the kingdom so we can advance the kingdom and God can advance our personal lives while we're advancing the kingdom. See? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood, naturalism, hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Oh, glory to God. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you will bind or lock with that key on earth shall be bound or locked in heaven. And whatsoever with that key you'll unlock or loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Goodness. These are keys to the kingdom. See, this is one, one of the uh, principles of kingdom living. God gives you, if you'll operate in your righteousness, your new creation realities by faith, he gives you keys, keys to lock and unlock. And whatever you lock and unlock on earth, it shall be done in heaven. Not in heaven and then on earth. Whatever we, why? Because the kingdom is now. 
Now has come salvation. See, now it's here. It's a kingdom now living. And we got keys to the kingdom. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against that. Glory be to God. So anything that is contrary, is anti-kingdom, you can bind. Anything that is kingdom that you don't have in your life, you can loose into your life. Hallelujah. So when the enemy, the devil, tries to attack your kingdom living, you have the power to bind that attack, to bind that assignment, to bind that effort. See? And then you and I have the ability to unlock things that have been hidden, things that have been uh, uh, treasured up for the born-again believer. You and I have the ability to call those things which be not as though they were. Bringing into our lives what we want into our lives and then speaking to that mountain and telling it to be cast in the sea, getting rid of what does not belong in the kingdom. But see, if you don't know, if you don't know what, what, how the kingdom operates, then you think any kind of tragedy, God did it. Any kind of, you know, something uh, went contrary to your life uh, being a success, well, God did it. No, God ain't, God's not, God's not trying to ruin your life. You understand? God is trying to get you to a place of good success. And your good success is understanding uh, how the kingdom, that you're in a kingdom, and that how you operate in that, in that kingdom is by your righteousness, by new creation realities, by faith, and that you have been given a set of keys. Keys to the kingdom. Lock and unlock. See, well, my goodness. When I discovered that, I said, what? What? My wife walked down in our garage one day, and, and I, I happened to be down there on the lower level, and she got both garage doors open, speaking out loud. I walked out there and said, what are you doing? She said, I'm calling our new cars in. And I washed her. She said, there's the cars in the name of Jesus you get in this garage. Get in here now in Jesus' name. What's she doing? Kingdom. What happened? Two new cars in our garage. New cars in our garage. It's kingdom. Well, I don't believe that. Well, see, that's your believer. You, 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 haven't, you haven't built your faith up to understand how the kingdom operates. I'm trying, I'm trying to help you. I'm already operating in this kingdom, see? And if you'll listen to a prophetic voice that comes your way and then embraces, you know, after, after this program goes off, go, go, go look at those scriptures. Go look at kingdom scriptures. Go through there and just find out what the Bible says about kingdom. You'll be surprised how many times it's mentioned. See, because you and I are living in that kingdom. Everything, everything provided in the kingdom. Your health is in that kingdom. Your sound mind's in that kingdom. Restoration of things that were lost is in that kingdom. Everything that you and I would ever want to live a, a life exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think is in that kingdom. It's the thief, John 10, 10, that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. That word life, Zoe. The God kind of life, like God lives now. See, it's called kingdom now living. I hope uh, these, these lessons have, have, have helped you uh, get a better grip on all that has happened uh, in our lives when we accepted Jesus as a personal Savior. Again, 
we don't make light of sins forgiven, never going to hell. We don't make light of that's wonderful. But but God is the one that brought the kingdom to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, uh, I understand uh, when I first heard kingdom, I started discovering kingdom. You know, I, I was like, well, how does this thing work? How do I do this? But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, he'll help you understand that. Our time is quickly, quickly, quickly gotten away from us. Go back and and uh, view these over and over again, and uh, let get your receiver up. Just just let it sink in. Let these sayings sink in. Ecclesiastes chapter eight and verse four, my favorite verse in the Bible. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Be a blessing. Power of Faith programs are available on YouTube 24-7, so you can watch from anywhere at any time. Search for Power of Faith on YouTube or go to youtube.com forward slash Power of Faith. Subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted. If you missed the episode, or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you. Hey, I want to uh, tell you about a book I wrote, Circle of Faith. I was on a 21-day fast, and I asked the Lord, Lord, how can I teach my people faith? And I had an open vision. And in this vision, I saw this circle. And it starts at hope, goes to faith, tribulation, patience, promise, experience, back to hope. This is the circle of faith when you go on faith to faith. I think it'll be a blessing in your life. It's, it's helped many a person. Just contact our office and uh, we'll get that in your hands to you. And it, will, it, it, it explains a lot of things that uh, I didn't have anybody tell me when I was coming up. God bless you.